And now before we go into prayer line, let's open to Joshua chapter 1 verse 1 till 5. And I'm going to read from the screen. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and this people, unto the land which I give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given to you, as I said to Moses. From the wilderness to Lebanon, even unto this great river, the river of Euphrates. All the land of the Hittites and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not be any man who will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. And as I was with Moses, I will be with you and I will not fail you nor forsake you. It says the, uh, they just made a little mistake, it's supposed to, it's a King James and I'm reading, paraphrasing a New King James Version. It's the same thing, the and you, it's the same thing. I want to speak just briefly to us about a topic called the shift of seasons. The shift of seasons. Life is combined of different seasons. Right now we are hitting a season of the fall. Uh, ending the fall and beginning the winter. The, the leaves are falling off the trees. Uh, the, the, the grass you know is no longer gets the water from the city irrigation things are shifting we all pulling out our warm clothes and hiding our shorts and flippers into boxes because a shift of seasons is coming I believe that spiritually God also has this times in our life where things shift where you go from sickness to good health where you go from poverty to God's blessing where you go from singleness to happy singleness or singleness to marriage where you go to having children to having great children where you, you, you just your life begins to shift and your life begins to change Israel had a season where they were in the wilderness before that they had a season where they were in Egypt and things were very difficult and things were very hard when they went into wilderness things were a little bit easier but things were still complicated and things were still very difficult and a time came when the Bible says Moses died and Moses represented a great leader. Moses represented, it was very hard to follow Moses. If I would be Joshua, we'd probably be pretty insecure. J Moses was the man. Moses was the guy that everybody loved and respected. Moses, he always knew what to do. He knew the wilderness, you know, he knew the wilderness very easily. He knew everything. He knew the languages, he knew all the good stuff and then he died. And on the top of that, Moses was a very great spiritual guy. He talked to God and God talked back to him and Moses died. But people still did not enter the promised land. And God comes to Joshua and says, now Joshua, you are going to take these people to the promised land. And things begin to change. Things begin to shift in the land of Israel. They begin to conquer the land. I want to just start off with saying something. Every problem we have, every wilderness we are in no matter how long it is it's temporary it's seasonal you have to view your problems as temporary or else they become permanent not because God intended them to be permanent but because you've allowed that because it been it's been so long you've allowed that to imprint on your mind that that's how it's going to be you make it normal like a sister shared today that she did not know how to define normal because having scoliosis was normal see for some of us living from paycheck to paycheck as it is with 76 of 76 percent of Americans it's normal but I want to tell you something it's seasonal and that will come to pass means it will pass it didn't come to stay every problem in your life is seasonal every problem in your life is temporary no matter how long that problem has been lasting you have to mentally agree with God I have a promise of God for this problem which makes this problem temporary if I don't beat it today I'll beat it tomorrow if I don't beat it tomorrow I'll beat it after the day after but the problem has to have a sticker on the top you're not here to stay you came here to pass can somebody say amen wilderness it was painful it was long but it wasn't permanent and when Moses died the wilderness was changed wilderness was shifted I remember hearing a story of this Macedonian Macedonian guy who when they immigrated to America he served in the military and in 1952 he was offered a four-year contract with a minor league with a minor league baseball 
and so he tried to play baseball first four years you know his goal was this I'm gonna play baseball for four years and after that I'm gonna get accepted into major league and then uh, you know play baseball that was his goal and dream until he gets injured few years into the contract he gets injured in his knee and he's not able to play minor league anymore so his dream of playing in the major league gets cancelled he gets so disappointed and so heartbroken he moves back with his parents his dad after seeing that for months he's doing nothing at home he kicked him out of the house and says if you're not gonna work you're not gonna live here so he goes in looking for a job nobody wants to hire him depressed discouraged disappointed finds a friend who has a restaurant and says listen can I please work for your restaurant don't pay me I just need to have somewhere where I work so my dad lets me stay in his house for free his friend says yeah you can work on the back part of the kitchen of our restaurant you can make pizzas he says okay I'll, I'll make pizzas as he was working pizzas there he realized he actually really 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 liked making pizzas people enjoyed his pizza so much that people would come in to ask for that guy's pizzas and then he decided to leave his friend's restaurant went on the side and started to make pizzas for a living we all have eaten from his pizzas it's called little caesar's pizzas he started a business which we have in tri-cities and you have made him very 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 wealthy this guy eventually went in and he bought the major league baseball team that he was dreaming to play in and today this brother he owns the very team he used to dream to play for and on the top of that owns a lot of other restaurants and has billions and billions of dollars with a broken knee see when you experience some setback in your life the devil wants to make you believe that that is supposed to define you the devil wants to make you believe that that is going to be permanent that somehow your dreams will be canceled see see his dream was I want to play major league God's dream was I want you to own major league God has a bigger dream than your dream and sometimes your rejection is God's redirection can somebody say amen a silent church is a dead church can somebody shout amen 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 I see we're forgetting to shout amen now your problem is temporary God's promise is permanent amen I heard a story of a milkman and for those of us who were in Ukraine in the village we remember this or maybe this was also in Mexico but um, in America it was also like this long time ago when the guys would deliver milk to people's houses and so this particular milk guy was delivering milk to uh, this house and there was this little girl she was always coming out uh, to gather the milk and he would tell her she, he would say you're the most beautiful girl in the world and one day you will be Mrs. America and so you know when you're 11 years old you believe everything and she's like yeah yeah of course until uh, a few years later she gets into an accident where she and this is what they said is that she broke her leg in 32 places and had 200 stitches on her face she became completely paralyzed she was on a wheelchair for I think four to five years and so here's a dream that a milkman planted inside of a little girl that, hey you're gonna be the most beautiful girl and you're gonna win titles and everything and he was not just speaking these words he was prophesying into her everything gets derailed she's in a wheelchair 200 stitches on her face leg broken in 32 places and she's rolling on a wheelchair but then she started to believe in the fact that this is not gonna be her life so she started to come out she started to learn to walk she then learned to walk uh, learned to run the stitches were removed everything was fine with her leg she applies and wins a local you know beauty pageant in her local city she wins that then she goes in to win the state Mississippi and in 1980 she wins the Miss America beauty pageant today she's married and he, she and her husband are pastors of a church let's put our hands together some of you probably have seen her on, uh, on, on TBN uh, you probably heard her testimony on TBN the point being is that every negative thing in your life see what we do with our life is we look at our life through the lens of the present situation and we only see doom gloom and darkness but you see how her life had different seasons it had a season where somebody spoke life into her it had a season where she had an accident it had a season where she had stitches it had a season where she just took the first step toward her dream it had a season where the dream became more realized and then had a season where she reached her dream that exact that's exactly how your life will have it will have different seasons it's very important not to get stuck in any season but to keep moving forward toward the promise of God regardless of the seasons that you are in 
every negative thing that is happening in your life right now you have to believe in your mind that this is just temporary God's promise is permanent God is good all the time and all the time God is good can somebody say amen every negative thing every bad thing every sickness every disease that is not gonna stay God's promise is gonna stay I'm just passing through that's why you gotta notify the sickness you gotta notify the problem say listen I'm not camping here I'm going through this and I'm gonna stay in the promise of God and somebody say amen you might be on that wheelchair spiritually speaking you might have those stitches today physically speaking you might have that that simply that broken leg today speaking in the area of your finances but you have to understand that thing should not define your life God's promise should define your life somebody shout amen that's why we have prayer lines that's why we have prayer services where we pray for the sick. That's why we have services where we pray, where we fast. Why? So that we don't get trapped and we don't get incarcerated by a season of our life. But that season comes and that season leaves and shift of season comes into our life in Jesus' name. Amen. Now practically, I just want to share with you four very practical tips on how to transition in our life with the shift of seasons. The first one is when your best leader is gone your best days are still ahead of you. For Israel their best leader was gone and sometimes it seems like when the best leader is gone the best days are gone. There is this disease that we could have good old days. Good old days is the mindset that people have where they think that the best days they had were in their past. When you look as a child you're like man when I was seven years of age I was so cute. Good old days. And you look at your face now and you're like well now the season has shifted <laughs> you know when, when you look back and you say man when I my first marriage when I things were so good and now you know it's like that marriage ended and the best days were behind me or maybe you had a husband or maybe you had a wife or maybe you had children or, or things you look back and and they didn't seem good at that moment but now that the things are different you look back and you're like man those were the good old days see Israel felt exactly the same thing when they stood in front of Mount Sinai when the manna came when the quail came you know when God just destroyed the rebels and swallowed them in that was awesome I mean things were so great and now they're looking at Joshua and Joshua's like guys can anybody give me directions where we're going next and they're looking they're like Joshua this little boy he doesn't know what he's doing I mean how, how, we're not gonna make it promised land we got the big guy he's gone the good old days are gone we're gonna get stuck here but honestly book of Joshua documents completely a different story your best days you have to tell that to yourself even if you don't believe it right now you have to tell yourself your best days are not behind you they're not in Florida they're not in the other country they're not in the other church man in that church where we had that revival those were good days and I'm not don't forget those days us thank God for those days document them and read them but remember your life is going forward and you gotta have something bigger to look forward than what you have behind you victim always focus on what is behind them and victors are focusing on what is ahead of them your best days are in front of you you have to tell that to yourself the best days in our church are ahead of us the crusades that we've had with apostle John Chi the services that we've had here even seven eight years ago you know where we would see sometimes a small little frickles of God's blessings and sometimes those things we don't, they don't feel like a blessing until they're gone and when they're gone you hit a little rough patch and you're like oh those were good old days or somebody was saved every single service or when somebody was doing this when somebody was doing that but God is bringing you into a days that's better than the days you've had before they're going to be different but they're going to be better in Jesus name I believe in that does anybody believe in that my best days are ahead of me hallelujah I see a few hands praise God anybody believe your best days are coming up your best days are ahead of you thank you Jesus your best days are ahead of you that means when Moses is gone your best days are still ahead of you I want you to write down number two is the rod must replace the ark must replace the rod the ark must replace the rod in the wilderness the rod was used by Moses to do miracles the rod did most of the miracles. It did the miracles of splitting the Red Sea. It did the miracle of um, 
when he would you know lift it the enemy Amalekites would be defeated when he would hit it the water would come out it seemed like the rod was like this magic stick that God used and only Moses had it no one else had the rod nobody else's rod worked Moses rod was like the, this this tool that God used everyone else's rod wasn't working but when the promised land comes I want you to notice in the book of Joshua you don't see one miracle with the rod every miracle in the book of Joshua was done with the ark and it wasn't Joshua carrying the ark it was the priest carrying the ark see in the wilderness it was just about Moses in the promised land it was about the priests in the wilderness it's about the rod the ark was there but the ark seemed to not play a central central figure in the miraculous of the wilderness in the promised land the ark plays as a central figure in the miraculous I genuinely believe you know like even with us when we pray with the anointing water I believe it's like the rod it's a medium that God uses when we pray with the anointing oil and sometimes when you see miracles happening and you see these people on the pedestal or you see this man of God on the big stages you know and there is a season for that and God gives those men to us all the time but the season shifts in our church and in your life when you recognize you can also be used by God as a person to do miracles even if you don't have a rod because you already have the ark it's called the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is on your shoulder as long as the Holy Spirit is on your shoulder God can use you in this season to do exactly the same thing sometimes even in a greater way than he would use those great men in the wilderness with the rods can somebody say amen in our church we value prophets we value great men of God we, we invite them we show their clips we encourage you to read their books, listen to their podcasts. But you must understand one thing. All of that is not to replace you taking on the ark of God to move in your world to see the miraculous. You don't need TB Joshua in your house for you to experience healing. You don't need John Chi with his water in your family for you to experience a miracle. There has to be a time where a shift happens in your mind to recognize this is so awesome. Moses and the stick that he had, this is incredible. This is awesome. You know, if we have that in our church, I'm going to go that anytime Moses is praying with the stick. But when I leave the church, the ark is on my shoulders. That means the same power that lives inside of them walks inside of me. And the Holy Spirit is waiting on me to, to step in and then his power steps in. Can somebody shout him? man see with Moses with Moses Moses had to wait on God to move first and then Moses went in with Joshua Joshua said to the priest you go in first and when your feet touch the Jordan see with Moses it was when God splits the Red Sea then you go they always waited on God Joshua God says well, it's gonna be different now I'm gonna wait on you when the priests step in is when the water is gonna split see no longer no longer you have to wait on God when it comes to healing when it comes to deliverance and breakthrough God has already said it is his will and God has already said he wants to do it now you have to step in with the power of the Holy Spirit say God I trust you God I know you hate this demons as much as I do you hate this sickness as much as I do you hate this poverty as much as I do I trust you God and I step in in your promise in Jesus name can somebody shout hallelujah don't wait just for the rod this coming year this coming week be the person who recognizes the Holy Spirit is on your shoulders where you go he goes what you say he says and he will do but the key here is this is the ark has to be on your shoulders it means you got to be conscious that the Holy Spirit is on you many people are walking around conscious of demons on them all the time oh something is oppressing me something sits on me and it's fine if it's maybe you're going through something very difficult but if you've been a Christian for the last five six seven years okay if you've been a Christian for the last six months and you've been coming to this church and constantly something sits on your shoulders do this <laughs> shake it off you tell the spirit of depression go to hell where you came from you say did you didn't, this is a wrong address and you if you need to do this you did but you gotta if you come to church you're like but I'm sick shake that off you come to church and you're feeling down 
shake that off why because Holy Spirit cannot sit on you if you allow all these ravens all these snakes to sit on your shoulders and you're asking their permission how long you're gonna sit them no you tell them you got two seconds get off of my back right now this is not just a, a preacher's talk I cannot tell you how many times in the service when I was younger I had this problem when I would come to service and I feel down you know I, it would just literally take me down for the whole service and pastor would come to me and he would say he said what's wrong with you and I said well I just feel down he said why are you being like a little girl oh man that offended me so mad and I was like man he's not like I, I got struggles here I have a weight of the world on my shoulder 16 and a half don't have a bill that I'm paying for my parents are careful covering for everything and their world is on my shoulders and he's not a sympathetic dude and pastor would always say tell very powerful revelation to me very powerful it changed my world this is the revelation snap out just like that I remember I was like no sympathy no nothing but I realized one thing is that the devil had more power over me not because of any legal door it's because I was lazy and because I was an emotional ro roller coaster and because I allowed that drama spirit to just get inside oh I just don't feel good I'm not gonna lift my hands I don't feel good so I won't sing I won't feel good so I don't pray you know I don't feel good today so I'm just not gonna come to church I had that sit in me as a teenager but because I had a good pastor who always said snap out it doesn't matter how you feel right now you step on that thing now when it happens sometimes I come to service like on Wednesday or on Sunday and I have an excruciating headache literally headache that I, I can't even open my mouth and I think of those words the pastor said within a second song I start jumping better than any of you not because I feel it because every time I jump I feel like I, I jump on that headache and I'm not gonna lie to you how many times nobody prayed for healing when the service was over the headache was gone and the worst the most important part is this I found my victory in Jesus power in Jesus spirit shake that off and get the Spirit of God on your shoulders because somebody say amen when you come to church and you don't feel like worshiping listen tell the devil to stay behind and said I'm gonna worship and when I come back you will not recognize me can somebody say amen you got to have an ark on your shoulders and that's when you have miracles in the new season of your life. Every time you got a little shaky in your house, the doors closed on their own, you don't need to call the pastor. Grab the anointing oil. We say, but I only have a cooking oil. Pray for it. It becomes anointed. The moment you touch it, you go anoint the door. Every time you couldn't sleep in the morning and you had a nightmare, you don't need to just call your home group leader. Listen, the ark is on your shoulders walk in step in into that area begin to move by yourself and if you notice you don't have a victory then you can bring them in but don't be the person who just always relies on the rod in a new season God wants you to rely on the ark somebody shout amen. amen I want you to write down number three is circumcision must replace complaining circumcision must replace complaining the wilderness was marked with complaining when they entered the promised land God says we're gonna do something different and so he had all the men be circumcised and this was very painful but it had to happen and all the women were at that time were glad like praise God I wasn't a man because the men were circumcised why was God circumcising them because the Bible says he wanted to cut away the reapproach of Egypt he wanted to literally cut off that complaining whiny victim slave mentality out of them he wanted them to be in covenant with God I want to tell you something that if you want to see a shift in your season that this has to happen you cannot complain and be circumcised at the same time you gotta instead of complaining you gotta circumcise yourself now not physically <laughs> I don't want nobody here going circumcising themselves and if you're a child you don't you do not understand what I just said circumcision do not google it it's something in the bible we don't do no more but it's spiritual significance in Jesus name everybody said Amen. circumcision means is when you put
put God first in your life the way Israel did it is that they cut off the foreskin of their the foreskin that was cut out from the reproductive member but what this means for us as Christians is that we put God first in our life for example in the area of our finances when we when we bring our 10 percent we cut the 10 percent the first 10 percent we bring it to God you experience the same pain they experienced when they had circumcision you're like ouch right and if you don't feel out just cut a little bit more 12 percent, and you will feel it you feel the ouchness of it you feel the ouch of it for a few days the same thing happens with the day see with finances we bring tithes this is where we circumcise we cut that out and we leave that to God with our day in the morning or in the evening you cut a percent of your day to God by giving it to prayer guess what happens sometimes you will feel that little ouch of it but you dedicate yourself to God and now you don't have time to complain because you're dedicating yourself to God same thing happens with your body is when you fast when for example in in a month we have three three four weeks and you take three days a month to fast guess what's going to happen your body's going to have a little ouch but this is what's happening it's cutting away the worldliness out of your life and it's positioning you for the maximized blessing that you're capable to receive plus you must understand as a Christian you got three enemies pride greed and lust when you pray you defeat pride when you give you defeat greed and when you fast you defeat lust so God established these three principles in our life praying giving and fasting to begin to cut away the world's grip over our life you can be in a prayer line and we can pray with you with all the anointing water we have the upstairs until your face is drenched in water but if you don't circumcise see Israel passed through the Jordan but there has to be the circumcision that has to come into your life you have to allow that to happen many people today they do not allow that cleansing to happen in their life and their spiritual life is stuck their spiritual life is stuck and so I want to challenge you if you want to see a shift can I ask you a question do you cut off 10 percent of your paycheck to God do you cut some time of your schedule to God do you cut some of your food over to God you might say well you know I'll give the prayer and I'll give the money but food man that's precious not the food remember the first temptation humanity had was with food the first temptation Jesus had was with food and we have to learn to put that aside and say Lord I seek your face I seek your face God does something cleansing inside of you which eventually positions you to be a person who sees a victory in Jesus name can somebody say amen and the last point I want you to write down is the enduring must give in to engaging enduring must give in to engaging what does that mean in the wilderness you endured the hardships in the promised land you engage the enemy in the wilderness your secret was to endure in the promised land you fight I was meeting a brother today who said lad you know I used to go to a church where um, you were more encouraged to you prayed for healing you didn't get healed well ask God for grace to endure it and a lot of you maybe a lot of us here today that's all we've been taught if you're sick endure you poor endure you have constant fights in the family endure and you have scriptures in the Bible where it says if you endure till the end you'll be saved and that's good but there is a season in your life where God takes the endurance and says you've endured long enough now fight now engage now fight the enemy not just get through but fight the enemy can somebody shout amen I want you to write down you don't get what God has promised you only get what you fight for God promised Israel all of the land they only got what they fought for you don't get what God has promised my friends you get what you fight for you get what you refuse to endure refuse to settle for by saying you know what Lord you promised it it's your will and I'm going after it I'm gonna fast for it God I'm gonna pray for it God I'm gonna confess your promise God I'm gonna stand on your word not on what my preacher said not on what my old church said not on what the tradition says not what the circumstances say what your word says your word created the earth it will change my circumstances put your hands together for Jesus Christ 
and you want to get everything God has promised can somebody say amen God has promised healing God has promised deliverance and God has promised blessing of God into your life and you have to stand for it and fight for it and those of you who are these deep theologians who say if God has promised he will make it happen well God wants to save everyone right people are going to hell why he doesn't want to save people of course he does it says clearly in his word he wants none to perish see God there's a permissible will of God and a perfect will of God permissible will of God is whatever happens on earth it's what we permit perfect will of God is what God has promised and he wants you to come in agreement with him you come in agreement with his word and with the spirit to accomplish that against the forces of the devil it's not God that's the problem now it's the fact that there is an enemy that is opposing the blessing and you have to agree with God and come against that enemy and have the victory in your life in Jesus name I want you to write down one more thought when it comes to this God does not have your blessing enemy does for Israel God didn't sit on their vineyards God didn't angels did not live in their houses it wasn't the angelic host that was controlling their vineyards their wells were not possessed by archangels all of the blessings God has promised were occupied by the enemies of God and so God was sending them so it would be foolish for Israel to come to God and say God give me a vineyard God says I don't have it Hittites have it Philistines have it Amalekites have it Midianites have it and God says if you want it I promise but God if you promised it weren't you gonna give it to me a hundred percent how are you gonna give it to me see they've been sitting on it maintaining it for you so this is what's gonna happen me and you are gonna join together and we're gonna go kick them out and you're gonna possess what I promised to you that's exactly how it was healing is not just in heaven healing God has it in your body the healing is already in your body health is in your body but sometimes if there's cancer in the body see the problem is not with your body the problem is with the cancer when the cancer is removed your body is fine when the arthritis is removed your body is fine when the spirit of poverty is removed your finances are fine when the spirit of fighting and and pride is removed your marriage becomes fine the problem is not with God God does not have in heaven his blessing your blessing in his pocket it's the demons that have his hands in your blessing and God says don't just cry to me let's go with me against the Midianites Gibeonites Mennonites and destroy them and get your blessing in Jesus name because somebody say amen and the last thing is that God was furious when they would get more in the wilderness but in the promised land he was furious when they settled for less in the wilderness when one guy brought more men other than he should God got angry when Israel wanted meat and they were not happy with manna God was furious in the promised land we see about 10 15 chapters where Israel settles they got just enough to be happy and God comes and he says why are you not pursuing more why are you not fighting for more but they say God we're fine God says well you're fine but that's not what I promised I promised you a lot more and God says now I'm furious because I want you not settled for less than what I promised don't settle for what you're comfortable with settle for what I am comfortable with for you can somebody say amen God wants you healed God wants you blessed God wants you prospering why because you're your child and if you're doubting that if you have a child would you want for your child to be sick would you want for your child to be poor would you want for your child to be possessed tormented of course not you're not even perfect God is better than you do you think that God somehow in heaven sits there and says what kind of disease do I send him a tumor or a lump in their body do you think God in heaven says and he says well I, I just want to just really make him poor why so they make make him humble God doesn't have those desires and God disciplines his children don't get me wrong God speaks to us many times in, in in our pain when we don't listen to him in our pleasure but it's God's will to bless you it is God's will to touch you it is God's will to help you it is God's will he paid for it on his own blood on the Calvary to help you in Jesus name a shift of seasons is coming and I'm in on it in Jesus name. A shift of seasons is coming and you are in on it. Can somebody say amen?